This is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're the ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. But I want you to listen to the No Holds Barred Network. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 14 of the next podcast right here on the Noel Holds Barred Network, your source for all WWE, NXT, NXT UK, UK wrestling coverage, and now your home to all AEW coverage, and it's all available right here on the network, so go follow the network on Twitter, at NHB Network, and you can also follow us on Spreaker, Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. It's also available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio for you guys to listen on the go and check out the live shows. You can also listen or watch us at this beautiful video form on YouTube.com slash NHBWR. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, as always, of the next podcast and CEO of the No Holds Barred Network, Kyle Masters, and I'm always joined by my co-host. He is the host that runs the West Coast, Hollywood, (coughs) Michael Chow. I'm sorry. (laughs) I knew that was coming. I'm a little bit under the weather, guys, because of the whole Chicago trip ordeal, which I'll get to, but I'm going to be coughing a couple of times. I'll try to go away from the mic when I do, but Michael Chow. Joining me, as always, my other host on the show. What's going on, Michael? And as you can see, if you're watching the video of this podcast, you can see he's also tuning in to the Royal Rumble, Ooh. which we are going to be reviewing. Um, <laughs> interesting. You don't have takeover in the background, though. Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, because cause I'm afraid, as you know, this might be an actually a long podcast, and NXT was only at two hours and a half, so mm. we're going to run out of time, so... Mm. It was Hello. really short. I'm here. Yes. yes, you're here. Yes. I'm here. I'm here. I just uh, uh, let you know, I, I, I just attacked Carmella, and I'm entering this woman's Royal Rumble, man. Oh. I'm getting oh, in there. No, oh, getting in there. Good for you, man. I mean, yeah. All the we... women all the women are going to pull their finishers on me, and I guarantee you tomorrow on social media, there's going to be an uproar about saying, how could women beat down a man? That's ju- unjustified. Oh, that's, I that's, got some that's things to say domestic about that. violence. I, I got saw all those tweets, man. Uh, we'll talk about that I later, knew that though. was coming. I, I said it to the guy next to me when I was there because I was there live. And I said, I'm like, oh, man, the uproar from this is going to be bad. They're going to get so many feminist groups attacked, like getting the attack from these feminist groups. And it's going to be bad. But, guys, welcome to the next podcast as the uh, little, little bit of a revamped logo, fresh start logo. No, I'm always going to call it a fresh start. Every time we change something, I'm calling it a fresh start. <laughs> But uh, in the uh, beautiful layout design that I've done, uh, n- not the best graphic designer, but I think I fairly did pretty good with that this one. You got Tomas, you got Tomas Chompa Look. down there. You got Gargano over there or over there. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, doing the review for Takeover Phoenix and the Royal Rumble, we're going to start with obviously <clears throat> the A brand, and that is NXT with the uh, Takeover Phoenix review. And I was there. I was there live. And I, if you're watching the video version Ooh. of this podcast, I'm wearing the T-shirt that I bought, Johnny Takeover. I also bought the um, – I'm starting the trend because I want to get one for every big four pay-per-view. The I Was There T-shirt with the pay-per-view on the front. I got the WrestleMania one. I just got the Rumble one. I have to get SummerSlam. And I have to get Survivor Series all over again. I was not able to start that trend when I went to the one in Toronto. So I'm going to have to wait and do Survivor Series over again to get that T-shirt. But I'm going to have all four. Uh, for that, I think I'm going to do something in my room. Maybe like have the T-shirt with the picture of me there at the bottom of it. I don't know, I'm do something. But uh, <clears throat> anyways, very very interesting weekend. Um, uh, it was the way back. The way if you guys haven't seen, I have to vlog up on YouTube right now of my experience down there. Uh, for the most part, it was awesome. Um, Phoenix is an interesting city. Not too busy of a city. Obviously more busy with the wrestling crowd there uh, this weekend. And uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's easy to get everywhere in the city. Everything is really close to each other, especially downtown Phoenix. And with the, the monorail in the middle of the road that lets you get you anywhere you need to. It was really, really convenient. 
Um, I really don't have any negative things about the city, more towards the product, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, Phoenix was great. The weather was fantastic. And if you've seen the vlog, it was my way back that where everything went haywire. Um, I guess uh, Mother Nature decided to screw me on the way back. And I used to, and I, it came back during that whole big polar vortex that happened across uh, North America. And I was actually stuck in Chicago for about a day and a half. Luckily, our flight the next day was not supposed to be till 6 p.m. We luckily got on the 2 p.m. flight. Uh, we were on the standby list and actually were able to get on that flight and got home a little bit earlier. But uh, still, that whole experience, uh, I haven't flown in a long time, like since I was probably 12 years old. And to go through that, like it was rough. Like it was very, like I, I give credit, and I said it in the, in, the, in the vlog, I give credit to you travelers, regular travelers out there that go through that and, you know, it's nothing to them. Because it's, it's definitely, <laughs> like when we had to wait in the customer service line for two hours, to find out what to do the next day, like, and then to find a way to stay in a hotel that they didn't accommodate, that we had to pay for. They gave us a little bit of a discount, oh. but we had to pay for. Um, it was about 80 bucks US each, and uh, we stayed the Holiday Inn. They gave us, you know, they gave them the whole bar network a prime floor. We got the top floor. We had a pretty nice two-queen suite. It was all right. Um, but anyways, it was uh, still, like, it's like you didn't <laughs> – I would have loved it if, if I was – going to stay in Chicago that day, but my plans were to be home the night before. So obviously I was, you know, disgruntled. Me and uh, No Self Phil went to the bar downstairs. I had a few wobbly pops or two. I think I may have had five or six of them, but I Ooh. needed to de-stress. Uh, and uh, it was actually really good. If you guys watch the vloggers, this massive nacho we ordered, really delicious. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, fi- getting home, I was so, so exhausted and just just so tired from that whole weekend. But, but... Overall, the experience in that Rumble weekend, amazing. I uh, highly suggest anything like a WrestleMania or a big four pay-per-view weekend. Being there in the rest- with the wrestling community, amazing. Like, it's it, being around everybody who's having such a good time. Like, you want, you're want you there, regardless of what you think of the product. And I was trying so hard sometimes to get that out of my mind, just be there and enjoy myself, and I did. Um, obviously, there were some things where I, you know, because I'm a podcaster, I'm an in-depth guy. I go in-depth with some things. There are some things where I'm sitting there going, mm. No, um, obviously <laughs> we will get we will get to that. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy myself actually throughout that entire experience. So it was really, really, really fun. Um, but yeah, um, very good time. Very, very, very good time. That's good. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, real fast, I should uh, probably give a shout out to uh, people in the live chat. Looks like we got a new listener, and looks like he's jumping on the bandwagon of the uh, hashtag anti Kona Club. I see that. Fuck the fuck. All you guys tagging oh, me all the day today. The hashtag is spreading. Gosh. All you guys tagging me in this fuck the finest crap. Come on, guys. Come on. Ah. Whatever. You guys will be. You guys will be sorry when he wins a championship belt. I'm gonna rub it. You guys just remember this day. I'm gonna rub it so much into all your faces, and I want to hear the words I told you. I want to hear the words from all you. I'm sorry, Kyle. You were right. From every single one of you. I'm telling you right now. You remember this. <laughs> Kona Reeves will be a future champion. I'm telling you right now. Just saying. I, and I'm going to say I I'm, told you so. I'm going to rub it all in your face. I'm going to be call- very salty about it. I'm calling it right now. Next year in the 2020 World Rumble, when Roman Reigns comes out as number 30, Kona Reeves is going to attack him, take his spot, and he will be everyone's hero. Yep, there you go. Hashtag Kona, our book hero, it, book will go. It. Michael Chow created book that shit. Book that shit. <laughs> Just saying. By the way, I mean, I don't know if you saw, uh, probably not, because I think it happened, uh, I think it was while you were uh, down in uh, Arizona for, for the World Rumble weekend. Kona Reeves actually, they were doing a live event in San Diego, and Ray Myst- he was called because they were in San Diego. Kona Reeves okay. was calling out Ray Mysterio. Tell- Ray Mysterio actually came out. No way. And of course, yeah, and of course he beat up Kona Reeves. But I thought it was actually really cool that he was kind of mixing it up with the main roster. So, hmm. uh, you know, okay. give Kona some time. All right, he'll get there. He's basically the Rock. Thank you. But, Thank you. Yeah. Hey, hey, he'll right. get there. He'll get there. Soul get development. There. Soul developmental talent. You'll see. Um, <clears throat> I can see the, the Miz coming out in your background there. Um, oh, man. That was... A... The graphics. Look at that. I mean, come on. This, was that really needed? I knew for sure when I first seen the stage 
and I saw how low it was. I'm like, oh my god, you already know they're going to be putting graphics up there. They're going to be putting these massive, stupid graphics. Good thing I didn't see it in the arena and they didn't put it up on the screen. Um, one thing I want, and I'm going to say before we get to the review, that pissed me off throughout, and it pissed everyone off in our section, and I guess it was all the way around the arena because Brian, who was a former host of the show, was on the other side of the arena, and it was on his section too. There was this bright ass goddamn light that was shining on our section that literally prevented everybody from looking at the ring and having to watch the jumbotron. It was so bright. Mm. Everyone was pissed. They went to customer service. I was tweeting at Chase Field, trying to tell him like, "Look, this is like blinding." So halfway through, they ch- decided to fix it. You know what they did? They changed the color from white to red and started brightening up all the other lights. I'm like, "This is not fixing the problem. Turn off the goddamn spotlight." <laughs> like it's not that hard. <laughs> oh man, it was literally rough. That was on the entire show. They didn't turn Ooh. it off. Like it, I was like, f- I had to go squint eye to like focus on the ring. And then, uh, most of the time, I was looking up at the giant jumbotron, the the one at Chase Field where the logo is. I was half the time I was watching it from there because I couldn't see. Everyone in their exactly. section was losing their mind. Like my buddy Phil was getting a headache, like a massive headache because of it. Like it was, was like really what, bright. What's going down there, huh? Is that Roman Reigns? No, like, it's nice. Seriously, oh, this this sucks. <laughs> like this it was sucks. bad. Like it was really, really bad. Like how come I couldn't understand why they couldn't turn it off? And then like I was talking to the guy next to me, and I, I'm like, okay, that kind of makes sense. Like they have to have it on in WWE in NXT. They have it off because they want to have the crowd dark. It's that their type of atmosphere. The WWE they kind of want the lights shown on the crowd to show the crowd around when they do the the, the round shots. So. But still, they could turn it down. You could turn that one off and brighten the other lights, which were not, not even that bad. Because that spotlight honestly hurt like hell. Like, it literally prevented me from watching most of the thing. And I, I'm a type of person that when I go to a live event like that, I want to watch the ring. Like, at TakeOver, I never looked up at the Jumbotron. I always watched the ring. That's why you're there. That's why you pay to be there. You don't pay there to look at the screen. You can just stay home and do that. So, it, it literally it drove me nuts. Even Phil went to customer service. It was it was bad. Like just all you have to do is go to the 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 one vlog of us at the Royal Rumble, and you'll see what I mean because I took a short video of it. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, enough uh, chit chatter. Uh, we're gonna jump right to it, and we'll start off at uh, NXT Takeover Phoenix. That's right, the NXT chants are raining down upon us. Michael Chow, we are gonna start off hot. I'm gonna start off with. Take over Phoenix. Very, very good card uh, um, with the uh, included NXT matches, which I saw live, which were, man, the if, if I don't know if, the, I hope, I, don't want, I wouldn't say they would ever mute it, but when Kari Zane and Io Shirai made their entrance, the crowd was loud for them, man. Like, Kari Zane got the biggest pop when her music started, man. Like, it was... Such a good match to get the crowd. That was the match they started with, and it really, it really took off. Um, it got the crowd into it, I think, because the uh, <laughs> it was hilarious. Before like waiting for the event, you know, there, there's always like random chance. I don't know if anyone's been to a lot. You've been to a wrestling event. You know how there's random chance to start up before the event actually starts. <laughs> the people next to me in this section were trying to start the worst chance I've ever heard, and they include the CM Punk one, which it failed. As soon as they started that, the whole crowd booed. <laughs> Like, it was bad. Um, so, he's not here anymore. He's yeah. not even from Arizona. But they're, like, trying to do the let's go Cena. Cena sucks. And everyone's like, he's not fucking here. <laughs> Give the guy some respect. He came that broke his ankle. Yeah, but a uh, lot of, lot of like, weird chants. But then they were, this, this match really got into it. And they were facing Marina Shafir and Jasmine Duke, where I thought this match would actually, what we talked about in the podcast last week, that we thought maybe later down the line this would happen, but they're getting it off right away. Um, I thought this was actually a pretty decent match. Good showing by Io Shirai and uh, uh, Kari Zane here. These girls looking like their chemistry is literally just like off the bat quickness. They 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 feed off each other. It, they show that they can actually be a successful team in this new women's tag team division that looks like they're going for on the main roster. So mm-hmm. I thought this was a pretty good showing. As for Marina Shafir and Jasmine Duke, I still think they're a little rough around the edges. Like it's. I'm watching them wrestle live. I'm going, ah, oh, it's like they, they still need a little. They're going to need some time in NXT. I don't think we're going to get this horsewoman thing uh, uh, until a long. Like, even with the rumors of Ronda Rousey leaving, that's what's the t- that's, this is the tough part. You could call them up for a quick 4v4, four four, like a fast lane match, 
and just get it out of the way because with the rumors of Ronda leaving after WrestleMania, but I wouldn't risk it, man. They're not ready for that type of matchup yet. They're not ready to go head to head with people that have been in the wrestling ring longer than they have. They are little. They are seriously rough around the edges. Even watching them live and going, oh, this is. They need some more training. That's for sure. Um, as for in and, and, and well, by the way, two things real fast. Number one, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Kyle's talking about the pre-show because he was there. Or oh, I'm sorry, he's talking about this because he was there. But mm-hmm. these two matches that Kyle's talking about actually aired this week on a yeah. regular episode of NXT. For those of you who are new to NXT, they always take basically the pre-shows before the pay-per-view, and they air that in advance as the uh, the episode after uh, NXT TakeOver, and they throw in a whole bunch of replays from NXT TakeOver. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And the second thing I wanted to say is, I've said it once before, but someone please get Jessamine Duke some pants, because I got to tell you, her attire... It's not good, and I'm not trying to be mean, but she's so skinny. It's it's get her some pants. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> get some tights. Not trying to hate, but yeah. All right, back to you, Kyle. Yeah, so that match was actually uh, <laughs> sorry. I had to type in the chat. Tell you freaking Kona Reeve haters out there. Are they um, still talking about Kona Reeve? Jeez. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a new the, Roman Reigns so here. Cuba Girl asks, so are Io Shirai and Kari Zane are in the t- women's tag team division, right? No. Okay, just asking. Yes, they are. Um, I, Cuba, I honestly, like I said last week on the show, I believe that they're being primed for that division whenever it starts up. It looks like an Elimination Chamber will be the starting point for that division. So we might actually see them in that Elimination Chamber match. So you never know. Um, uh, well, they've already announced that it's going to be three from SmackDown, three from oh, okay, Raw. So, okay. yeah. And it, it's weird. I mean, I would have loved for them to be in there, but it's... Because, like, who uh, else is tag teaming on NXT right now besides... The, the other two horsewomen like you're not gonna exactly. are you gonna phase developmental talent until your call up like what else are you gonna do you might as well have been into that elimination chamber unless they're gonna play some angle where uh, a, a team gets injured and they replace oh, okay. them right so that makes sense it could happen um anyways the other match that they pre pre taped for NXT was the Forgotten Sons Who? versus the <laughs> the Street Fighter yeah the, the crowd started a we forgot you chant I don't know if it was we loud forgot. enough on TV. Uh, but this was also a quick match. Um, it was decent. I mean, I actually, I apologize. I walked out halfway through because <laughs> I really needed a drink. I was really thirsty, so I left. And I was trying to find the the mixed drink stand. I couldn't find it for the life of me. And by the time I got my drink, got back to my seat, the match was already over. So uh, the Guest of Forgotten Sons did win by pinfall. There was a move I missed by Montez Ford. I caught it on a, a replay. Uh, a giant uh, that that frog splasher leap he did Ooh, out of the ring. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, Forgotten Sons picking up the win, which is very very interesting. Because that's now one one between these two. I don't know if they're priming this for like you said the uh, Dusty, Dusty Rose Tyson Classic, and we're gonna get the. I'm assuming that we're gonna get the uh, uh, the tiebreaker at this Dusty Rhodes Classic. So I imagine it's probably going to be announced within the next couple of weeks. Uh, I saw that they did the tapings yesterday for the next couple of weeks. I made sure I didn't see anything from those tapings. I even saw, uh. I even saw a headline article saying uh, who Shayna's next opponent is. I didn't click on my F that. Get me out of Twitter. I'm not. I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything. I want to be surprised when I see that. Can, can I just say real fast? And let me think about my, my words real fast because <clears throat> I don't want to spoil anything. So on Twitter, I'm I'm just like Kyle. And I'm like most of you. I don't. I do not want to know what happens because obviously NXT they tape way in advance. <laughs> now the headline said so and so, and it's a huge. This is a huge thing that happened on NXT, and I can't tell you what the title says because it spoils something but it said in the description it said spoiler so and so happened and i'm like okay and then they showed a picture of the thing that happened i'm like why did you do that you put in the description spoiler but then you add the picture so i'm like i don't need to click it because in the picture it shows what happened Mm -hmm. so son of a so you know but i'll I'll something big sure that... is happening. Something <laughs> okay, big so is happening. Something's guys. happening in the next couple of weeks. So we'll keep an eye on NXT and we'll keep right. you guys up to date with those reviews. Um, I need to unfollow that person. <laughs> yes, that's an man. odd question in the chat that if I ever had my nuts stuck in a toaster, I would not be answering that. That's a, it's a little different right there. Oh, um, man. Did it come from that ass podcast? Uh, probably one of you guys, one of the, one of the goons from there. 
Anyways, um, we'll move on. We'll actually move on to the main card here. And <clears throat> we'll get on to the first match, which was, I think, a really decent match. But what stuck out for me in this was the entrance by the War Raiders. This was the dopest entrance I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Watching that live. Okay, so we first, they're first doing like the, the, the intro package. And I could see them, the smoke building. I'm like, oh, my God. They're doing Alistair Black and Tommaso Ciampa right now. And I'm like, oh, my God. They're doing this like. Like, what, what's going to happen? All these thoughts are going through my mind about, like, oh, my gosh, was Ciampa losing the title here and getting involved in Johnny's match? Like, what's going to go on here? And all these thoughts. And then um, they played that video with the the, the, the horn. I'm like, oh, it's War Raiders. But I'm like, oh, this is pretty dope. And with all the Vikings and stuff, and that was dope. And apparently, which is pretty cool, Sarah Logan, who is mm-hmm. married to Roe, was one of the Vikings. And I'm trying to, like, pick her out, and I couldn't. They did such a good job hiding all the faces with that. Um only critique when I really wouldn't call it a critique is like when the warriors were walking up the ramp, I guess all of them were supposed to walk up synchronized and the one guy in the right walked up first and he turned around and went, Oh shit. Yeah. You could actually, uh, I don't know if you've got gone and rewatched it, but the entrance kind of look a little bit sloppy because there's like times where they were kind of beating their shield and some of them were doing it and some of them were not. And you can totally tell it wasn't kind of like, in sync but uh yeah it was a cool it's a cool entrance um if you guys want to see the backstage behind the scenes that kyle talked about with sarah logan they actually have a lot of world rumble stuff involving nxt superstars on the youtube channel of the wwe performance center i suggest you go check it out it's actually they have some cool videos with them revealing to the uh the nxt superstars that they're going to be in the rumble and their reaction it's actually pretty cool so go and check it out cool I'll have to check it out. I actually sent you a video today of the the sad Nikki Cross footage. And, oh. oh man, that was that was that was that was a tearjerker for sure. Uh, <laughs> any, anyways, into the match, really really decent match between the Undisputed Era and War Raiders. Um, shocking ending because I didn't think I picked. I'm pretty sure Undisputed Era to retain here, and I think you picked uh, War Raiders here. Um, Might I add, I don't like to brag, but Tiffany, because she kept score, I mm-hmm. actually swept the card. I yeah. actually predicted every single winner on the card. Yeah, everyone yeah. in that crowd was shocked that the War Raiders won. They're like, like everyone's jaw was dropped. They're like, what? Like we, everyone, even the people I was talking to in my section, <laughs> thought for sure that. Undisputed Era was still going to continue being champions forever. Like they were going to be one of the longest reigning tag team champions, and someone was going to dethrone them, and it was going to be this big ordeal. But for them, Warriors to win, like that's huge for them. And you know, I give credit to them. They're a really good tag team. I remember watching them in New Japan. Like they were really sick for that style of wrestling. And then when they got signed to NXT, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're going to bring that style over. They've been pretty good. Obviously, with uh, was a row being the really more athletic one, even Hanson getting his flips in. Um, both of them just are a really, really good tag team, and the crowd really, really got behind them. At first, they were really behind. I mean, it was tough. It was really split down the middle. They kind of changed hands when the War Raiders finally won. Um, but uh, it was really, really good match. I really enjoyed it. Um, not sure where the Undisputed Air goes from here. I know I don't know if they do the obligatory rematch in NXT or not, or if they're going to do that. Um, or maybe they cut that out, and then you know the winner of the Dusty Rhodes Classic is the next challenger for the War Raiders title. And maybe the Undisputed is like, okay, we're going to go in there. We're going to win this thing. Like, we're going to get our title shot back. And, you know, maybe they cheat their way to the finals. You know, something like that. Mm-hmm. So, I can kind of see they, that happening. They could be the very first ever two-time Dusty Rose Classic uh, winners. So, mm-hmm. never been done yeah. before. We'll see. Uh, so, they moved on from him. And they had a match that I <laughs> I thought would open the show or at least be in the NXT part. But it ended up being the second match of the night. And that was Matt Riddle and Cassius Ono. <laughs> Bro, um, <laughs> crowd was really behind Matt Riddle, man. Uh, the guy next to me hated. <laughs> the guy next to me hated Matt Riddle. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I wanted to get in with the bro chance. So I'm like, maybe I should. This guy, I honestly, this guy next to me had a massive hate for Matt Riddle. He was like, boo! <laughs> like he hated him, and he didn't even cheer. The weird part was he didn't cheer for Cash Sono, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy just legitimately hates Matt Riddle. I hate them both. I hate NXT. I'd even oh, buy a man. ticket. I wandered in. 
he was just literally like not impressed with him. I was like, okay, man, sorry. <laughs> this guy is probably the future of NXT. He's dope and he's <laughs> sick in the ring. This match was longer than what they did before, obviously. I knew there was going to be a little bit longer. Went to about nine, ten minutes long. Um, I thought it was an okay match. It was, I mean, it was mainly a, a more of a showcase for Matt Riddle. And I guess, uh, I don't know what. I mean, he picks up the victory, obviously, here. Weird very, ending. very odd winning. The, I've never seen a match end in a TKO before. <laughs> that was odd as hell. I never well, oh, I never see the end of a ground and pound. Well, to like, be fair, it technically didn't end in a TKO because if you remember a couple of years ago uh, when Brock Lesnar took on Randy Orton at SummerSlam, he beat the hell out of Randy Orton mm-hmm. and the ref called off the match, gave Lesnar the win and called that TKO. In yeah. this one... He just started beating him up, and Cassizono actually tapped out. And I've never seen someone tap out from shots. a non-submission move. Yeah, to shots. Like, made, that was – I've never seen like that. It looked like a wimp. They might that as well have just gone for the TKO, honestly. That was different. And a lot, a lot of people were a little bit confused at first. And people were like, damn, like first ever. Like that was nuts. So, I mean, that's – it's something for Matt Riddle to build off of and say, you know, like I, I beat Cassizono to death and made him – quit because of you know he's a baby so i don't know where he goes from here um as for matt riddle you know the, i can't see him in the mid card title feud yet i can't see him in the main card title feud yet so me thinking maybe a rematch with cash Stone, probably not no um, they, they've wrestled each other way too many unless times he teams and... up with uh what's his uh, buddy and keith lee into the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. Maybe he teams up and goes into that. Oh, yeah. And maybe they pull like a, like a Bobby Roode Dillinger angle where Keith Lee turns on him and then mm-hmm. you know that starts a feud and something like that. I can kind of see something like that. Maybe one of the one of the two there um, from here because after because Matt Riddle's going to need something now. You can't just keep doing these two because after this is this this got to be the end of the line for Riddle and Ono. Um, so yeah, I don't know not too bad of a match. Um, we moved on here to basically the match of the night. This mm-hmm. is already a leading candidate for match of the year. And it's funny because this time last year, Gargano and Cien Almas had the match of the year candidate in the same month at TakeOver Philly. Literally. Like, that was match of the year at that point as well. So Gargano seems to be the guy that put <laughs> to start the, the the match of the year trends at the beginning of the year has one with Ricochet here for the North American Championship. What a freaking match! Mm-hmm. I've never jumped in and out of my seat like that so much in an ev- a live event than this match. Like I was losing my sh- everyone in our section was losing our goddamn shit. Like we were going nuts for this, and this was such an insane match. Good for Johnny Gargano, especially uh, Gargano picking up the victory here. Who I think I. I did pick Gargano uh, for the win here, and I was actually I was also shocked because I picked Gargano, but I'm like in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, they're probably going to make Ricochet retain here, and Gargano's going to go after the main title. Um, but damn, I didn't think Gargano would win the title here. When he did, I was so happy, especially because I'm a huge Gargano fan. Obviously, you guys know my Johnny Gargano t-shirts I usually wear, and the obviously the network plug he did for us. I had to support him, but then I also loved Ricochet, so I was torn apart in this match. Um, but obviously, my love is more for Johnny Gargano over Ricochet, and for him to win the North American title, his first major championship win here, it it felt so great to be there to support it with him. The crowd was so behind it as well. But they put on a goddamn clinic. This was a sick match, Michael. Unreal. If this was for the NXT Championship, I would have been completely satisfied. And I do want to point out that uh, it looks like nothing that Gargano was doing was working. So he had to resort to his friend's little bit of dirty tactics. Pulled up the mat off the floor. Mm-hmm. Suplex on the concrete. There you go. And that hey. will play a factor because I, I as soon as I seen that mm-hmm. and it happened, I'm like, I guarantee you we see we see this spot again sometime later in the night. I knew it. I'm like, I, I, because it's, it's a tactic that his buddy Champa does. And I'm like, this is going to happen in Champa's match. I fucking know it's going to. The guy next to me is like, it's going to happen. We, we know it's going to happen. So, you know, later in Champa's match, we saw during that match, it did happen again. And I'm like, it's the same fucking spot, too. <laughs> so, uh, this was actually, man, this was insane. I'll, I'll go back and rewatch this match 
however many times. I don't care. I can never get bored of this match. This match was sweet. They had multiple standing ovations. This is awesome. Fight forever chance. Um, and you know, you guys know how I feel about those. I only feel like they should be chanted when it deserves it. This match, God damn, deserved it. Um, so good for those two for putting on an unreal performance. Good for Gargano winning the NXT North American Championship. And it's going to be interesting where they go from here. It's going to be very, very interesting. Um, I, I, I really... And this will play into a factor at the end. What happens at the end of TakeOver, which ends up getting resolved now, we have the official match announcement at this Sunday. They're bringing back halftime heat. I didn't even know there was a halftime heat. I and think wasn't that was that not the empty arena match within the Rock and Mankind? Wasn't that not the last halftime heat before my time? But I love <laughs> the fact. No, I love what WWE is doing because they literally are showing vintages of like Maroon Five and saying, "Why watch Maroon Five?" Question mark. And I'm like, "Wow, they are going all out." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I'll watch it probably. My brother's probably gonna watch the Super Bowl, and I'll probably just tune into the WWE Network. But you know, it, it was, sucks. It sucks because I want to. But Michael, I'm telling you right now, it's a thing that I have to rewatch because of what I just found out today. I found out that Maroon Five is going to be playing the SpongeBob halftime show episode song in their performance. So now I'm forced to watch Maroon Five because <laughs> I want to see them play that. Uh, that song they did in SpongeBob at the Super Bowl because I grew up watching SpongeBob and I loved it. And I remember always watching the episode and I loved that episode where Squidward starts a band and it's with SpongeBob and the goons and he's afraid to show it to his brother and they, they just make the most unbelievable performance at the Super Bowl. And there, there was this massive petition going around to get them to play it and it reached almost a million signatures. And now it's been confirmed because someone was videotaping the stadium and seeing it on the Jumbotron during Maroon 5's rehearsals. So they were playing it in the stand. They could hear it. So I'm like, oh my god, Maroon 5 is going to goddamn play that song. And it's going to be amazing. So just because I'm a huge SpongeBob fan, I have to watch that. I'll watch Halftime Heat later on in the night. Um, but I'm sure it's going to be a pretty sick tag team match. Like, look at the people that are involved. So anyways, back on track here. Uh, Gargano, good for him winning North American Championship. I think you picked Ricochet, did you not? No, 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 you picked Gargano. That's right. You swapped no, I picked yeah. Gargano. Yeah. Um, so we moved on to the Women's Championship, Shayna Baszler versus Bianca Belair. Mm, I had some critiques about this match, especially at the end. Um, the way they finished it, I thought, was the wrong move. Uh, this goes ahead with something that happened in the Rumble, which we'll get to as well. I do not believe... Uh, and I just want to point out something in your background now uh, of your, your TV showing the attendance of 48,000. Lies. Well, I actually found out the real attendance. Uh, actually, that night it was actually forty thousand. So they were off by eight. <laughs> they're always because they're was, always lying. If you go back and watch my vlog, there was tarped areas in the back that they tarped off. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The attendance record they always say during WrestleMania it's always a freaking lie. Yeah, it's always Dude, they it's always just, oversell. It's always it. inflated. Yeah. Anyways, um, so this women's match had some critiques about the end. Overall, though, it was what I thought we were going to get out of these two. I knew Marina, Shafir, and uh, What's-Her-Face were going to be there. Um, but didn't like the end. Did not like the end. Um, I think Bianca Belair tapping out literally just ruined all credibility from her. <laughs> Michael pointing at Ron and booing her in the background. Um, Dude, she anyways. got booed out of the building on Monday Night Raw. I, and even at the Royal Rumble, are, man. Even at the Rumble, she was getting boo Every time they showed her in a promo – Booze everywhere. I was like, oh, oh, oh the heat. Um, yeah, it, if I could just say real fast, a lot of people are thinking about why they're booing uh, Ronda Rousey, and you can throw in your quick two cents. I personally believe th- there's a whole bunch of stuff on why people are bu- uh, booing Ronda Rousey. One, I believe, is because Dave Meltzer really he really screwed her by saying that she's leaving after WrestleMania. And after Dave Meltzer said that, WWE immediately released a statement saying, "No, we got her signed for three years." But just people just don't like people who leave. And second mm-hmm. reason is this is just a personal reason. I, I I just feel like she just talks way too cocky. She always talks about how any ring she's in is is her ring. She said something yeah. to to I think Sasha Banks or Becky yeah. or something saying that oh the ground I walk on is owned by me. She just talks way too cocky. She did it in UFC. She talked way too yeah. cocky. Then she got knocked out. So. A lot of people don't like cockiness, so I don't know. Kyle, why do you think Ronda's getting booed? I mean, the obvious is because she's going up against a fan favorite. I think because she's leaving. 
because people yep. know she's basically done after only one year. After mm-hmm. you know, everyone thought she was going to be here for a while. This goes back to what you remember when fans knew about Goldberg and Brock Lesnar leaving. Look what they, exactly. look what they did to yep. that WrestleMania 20 Absolutely. match. They fucking ruined that match. That match was the worst match. Of, that's that's the worst WrestleMania match of all time. That goes down as number one for me. So no, for me, it's Lesnar and Roman from last year because oh, yikes. Even that, yeah, that was pretty bad. I didn't know because I left the arena. <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, yeah, so Shayna and uh, Bianca Belair going at each other. I think they did a good job with making her look strong from mm-hmm. literally almost kicking out of the, the submission at least three times. I think that was a really, really good job of doing that. I don't think she should have tapped. She should have been knocked out, you know, like let her get let her get freaking go to sleep. That should have been it, and that's how, that's how you do it. Because they did it with Ember Moon, or was it Asuka? They did it. No, it wasn't Oscar. They did it with Ember. Uh, Kari, Moore. Kari, Kari Zane. They did it with her, and that that's where the road they should have gone down because they have faith in Bianca Belair. She's going to be a top woman in this division. This really not, took her down a notch because she was literally built on this undefeated streak. Her undefeated. They even mm-hmm. she even. What's weird is that they she was still saying it in her backstage interview after this match. Saying that she's still undefeated. Please don't be that person to annoyingly say that all the time. That's just going to ruin your credibility at, like straight from the get go. They got to stop that. And dead in its tracks, do not make her say that anymore. Because now, you know, from the result we got, that just she's lost a bunch of credibility, man. And it's literally knocked her down a notch. So, um, uh, fair to make Shayna retain. Okay, I was going for Bianca Belair, hoping that this would be the call for Shayna Baszler. Looks like they're not doing that. Um, so good for her to retain, although I would have changed the ending a little bit. I don't know about you, Michael. Uh, I, I would have um, kept it done. I, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, real fast, um, I don't know if you caught it or caught it on social media. Sam Roberts, who he's not for me, but he was on the pre show panel. Oh, he, no, there was a I was lot of the shit talk. out of him at the Royal Rumble. Trust Great. me. Great. Trust me. He, or even at TakeOver. I think it was at TakeOver as well. Uh, I was, we were all booing the shit out of him. There were random people yelling, you suck, Sam Roberts. Oh, man. It was Sam great. Roberts. I've, I've, I've tried listening to his podcast, but he, he's simply not for me. But I don't know if you heard Kyle, but he ripped Bianca Belair. He was saying everything from yeah. – Oh, my God. Okay, I what, watched where? that. The, the big botch. I'm like, oh, my God. This is plain as day being fed shit through his mic that he doesn't know mm. how to – how to interpret. I'm like, oh my god, you are so bad you, at your job. You can tell that he really messed up because he was saying like serious, so negative yep. stuff by saying by Bianca Belair was not NXT takeover worthy. He even said that Bianca Belair being in this match was a waste yeah. of time. And then there was a sudden weird botch pause that you could totally tell people were yelling at him in his earpiece, but yep. it was just freaking out there. But um, to get back to the match, yeah, Kyle, I definitely agree with you. I personally believe that they seriously overbooked Bianca Belair because I, I personally thought that um, everything from from uh, Shayna Baszler oh, – not Shayna Baszler. Bianca Belair giving Shayna Baszler her finisher and then the ref getting knocked down and then yeah. the fans counting one, two, three, basically saying that she would have gotten the win. And then from the goons basically like messing up the match for her like twice yeah. and then her – out, powering out of the Kirafuda lock, like what three times? Yeah, I thought it was overbooking it. Yeah. But uh, to go back to what you were saying, if I w- if I had booked the match, because I really like the fact that she's undefeated. How I would have booked the match is after Shayna Baszler or after Bianca Belair powers out of the Kirafuda clutch the third time, Shayna Baszler loses her shit and just basically beats the hell out of Shayna Baszler, mm-hmm. and then the ref. Just call for disqualification because when you do that, it accomplishes two things. Number one, Shayna Baszler keeps the title due to disqualification. And two, Bianca Belair wins by disqualification and the streak is kept alive. She's still undefeated. Okay. But, yeah. you know, Triple H, he can't be right <clears throat> he all He has the time. his reasons for his madness, right? So he's got he's got to have something up his sleeve for this reason. And uh, actually, Tiffany asked a question in the chat just now. Will Bianca get a second chance? I feel like she has to fight her way for a second chance. She can't just be given it right off the bat. It's not really fair because uh, she plainly lost. She tapped out and lost. If you tap out and lost, you don't get instant title shot right away. And it's not something they do with NXT. So it's going to be really interesting to see who gets pushed now. I think uh, it's a good thing I didn't click that article, but I'm going to go ahead and guess. Um, 
it's either going to be a Bianca Belair, which again she'll probably have to fight her way into, or I can see maybe a, a Kari Zane or not Kari mm-hmm. Zane, um, Candice LeRae. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yep. Because she had a pretty good showing. Um, there's actually another girl, two other women that appeared in the Rumble who are going to be in NXT. I'm pretty sure, and that is uh, uh, Xia Li. I think I'm saying her name right, and mm-hmm. also uh, Ricochet's girlfriend, uh, Casey Canzano. Mm-hmm. Something like that. They both had a really, really impressive showing. So I'm thinking that's that's a good women's division boost right there. So maybe one of them. I don't think right off the bat. I'm going to either go with either a Bianca Belair fighting her way back or a Candice LeRae for that women's championship for the next competitors. That's my guess. Um, so you're betting uh, Candice LeRae? Yeah. And More then, leading towards her. Fair enough. Then uh, I choose personally... That's going to be Candice LeRae, but at the very last moment, Nia Jax comes out, lay her <laughs> out, and Nia Jax is now in the title picture because now Nia Jax attacks anyone she wants. Yeah. Hell, she's going to attack Tommaso Ciampa next week. Mm-hmm. Tommaso Ciampa, she's coming for you. No mm-hmm. man is safe. Yeah. God. Anywhere. Damn. Nia Jax we'll coming for you. That. We'll get into that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so, move on to the main event. Tommaso Ciampa, Aleister Black, main event, NXT Championship. You know, for me at this point in the night, I was pretty pooped because I was already rocked from the first match. I was already excited from the Gargano and and uh, Gargano and uh, sorry Ricochet match. I was also a little bit. I used a lot of energy in that women's match because a lot of people were like, "Oh my god!" Like Bianca's fought out of this like three times. Everyone thought she's going to do it, so that's when everyone started getting behind her because for the first half of that match, the crowd was dead. Like we were all pretty much dead from that last match. Um, so by this main event, I'm like, oh, like I'm like, okay, yeah, like I'm, I want to see Ciampa and Aleister Black wedding because they're fucking amazing. But then, you know, I wasn't as invested in it. Like it to me, it was just like they could have done this. It for me, it felt like they could have done this on an episode of NXT. It didn't feel like a main which, event level which match. They did. Yeah, it, they could have done this. I think the main event should have been Gargano and Ricochet. To be honest. And they could have, they should have done what they did at the end of this match. They could have done the same thing. They could have had Gargano go up on the stage, celebrate, have Ciampa come out, kind of play off just like they, they the, the first, how this feud first started, um, which we'll get into in a second. But uh, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of the crowd got into it a little bit after, a little bit into the match more. Um, there was that spot, like I said, where they took the ring apron off. And it literally was the same exact spot, um, except this time it was uh, Alistair Black to get the advantage on Ciampa. But if you look closely, they they made it safe. Ciampa's head landed on the mat that was folded. I thought at first that his head hit the concrete, and I'm like, oh my god, how did they, <laughs> how did that, they pull this was, off? That was a loud smack. So I was mm. like, ooh. It's a good thing I saw really closely that he had his head hit. They when they showed the replay on the screen, his head sh- uh, hit the. Uh, the, the mat the, that was turned over. So, other than that, this match, again, it was... I wasn't really in more into it because I was already drained at that point, but it was really good for what we got. Um, the big thing here is what happened after, and especially mm-hmm. when TakeOver Phoenix went off air. So, Ciampa's celebrating with the championship belt after a really impressive win. I thought it didn't make Aleister Black look that bad. Both of them had a lot of near falls, and I think it was the right decision to get, keep Ciampa with the belt. Guy is literally one of the greatest NXT champions so far to hold that bell. He's up there in that category, I think, already. Um, so he's walking up the ramp, and then I'm like, and I'm calling it. I told the guy in front of me, I'm like, I'm telling you right now, and this was my original guess, and it's on the vlog. I'm like, I bet you Gargano comes out, and Gargano's going to be the one to throw Ciampa into the, the barrier after hugging it out this time. That's That was my guess. We didn't get that exactly. We had actually Gargano come out. And they're both looking at each other's titles and then raise it at the same time. I and called I'm it. like, oh, man. And then the whole crowd's chanting DIY. It. Yeah, you did call that. The whole crowd's chanting DIY was nuts. And then I don't know how far they did it, how far, you, how much you've seen at first on the live show, Michael. But I, I, I actually saw what you actually uh, put the video out. So it, it went – dude. <laughs> The logo of NXT, I swear, I was very close, by the way, of turning off my TV, but as soon as I saw the NXT logo, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> Anytime when they show that logo, something is about to so happen. The, so they showed Valentine Dream coming out? Did they show that? Like him? No, they maybe? didn't show that. Okay, so, so, so that's where it cut you know, out? 
it, it went off the air with both of them raising their titles, and that's it. Went off the air with them. Okay, so Velveteen Dream comes out here, and we're as they're raising their titles, everyone's getting starting to walk, and we hear Velveteen Dream, and we're like, oh, and everyone turns around, and we're, we come out, we we watch this happen, and I'm like, okay, this is, this is interesting here, and then Adam Cole comes out, and then Alistair Black comes up the ramp, and then um, there's another one. Who am I missing here? Uh, there was um, so so Gargano. Uh, so Gargano Black Black came eventually from the ring. He came up there. Um, Ricochet was there. Ricochet, Ricochet, yeah. Ricochet, ended up and coming uh, out as well too. And, and Adam then, Cole. They're all like bickering and, and jawing at each other. Like referees are holding them back, and then it all starts to go haywire when Velveteen Dream freaking smacks Johnny Gargano <laughs> across the face, and we're all like, "Oh!" And, <laughs> excuse me. It was that. And they bad. all oh. just go. They just you could I could hear the smack from where I was. And then they just start all brawling at each other, going nuts. And then Triple H and the executives come out to separate them. And then they all push into the backstage. So at this point, we're all leaving again. Everyone's turning around and going again. And then they put it on the jumbo strong of the, the, the gorilla position, them all fighting. And everyone's turning back around and going back to their seats, going, oh, shit, it's not over yet. And then they're all brawling in the gorilla position. Triple H is separating them and, and separating them, made, made the faces go back out through the entrance way and the, the heels in the back there. And you kind of kind of count them as the heels now. Adam Cole, uh, Gargano, and Ciampa. And then uh, everyone thought that was done because they didn't make their way out onto the entrance ramp yet. They just went through the curtain. So then everyone started turning around. And then they came out and everyone started turning back around. We did, we did this three times <laughs> because we all thought it was over. And then... Uh, this is where everyone thought was a curtain call. So, mm-hmm. Alistair Black, Ricochet, and Velveteen Dream all came out to the ring and all celebrated with the crowd. They each had their entrance music play one after the other. They did the whole three hands up and the three hands down bow, and everyone's like, "Oh shit, are they all getting called to the roster now? Like this is this is interesting. Like uh, this is this is weird because okay, Alistair Black, I understand. Ricochet, I think is too early." And Velveteen Dream has been literally on the fence of being called up any day now. So those two, for sure, Ricochet, I'm like, that's a little too early. But maybe he's pushing himself so he's so good that he's getting pushed up to the main roster right away. Never forget about how desperate Vince gets. I mean, don't forget about the whole the whole six call-ups that he did, and we're rarely seeing. Spoiler alert, I can't believe EC3 was not in the Rumble. Lars Sullivan, it's Ozzy MIA, and I don't know if he's ever going to recover. So, it's, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, this was interesting. And then, uh, I guess they announced that Halftime Heat is returning, NXT uh... edition. And Halftime during the Super Bowl, we're going to see the three on three match between uh, these three. Uh, these uh, So, you have uh, Ciampa. Uh, Gargano and Alistair Black. No, Ciampa, Gargano, and Adam Cole versus Alistair Black, Velveteen, and Ricochet. A huge six-man tag team match that has potential to be spot fest central. Um, I'm definitely going to be checking it out. Probably won't do it live because obviously I've already explained why. Um, SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Good reason. SpongeBob first over NXT. Just saying. (laughs) Anyways. um, (laughs) Oh, by the way, uh, just to throw it out there, um, I don't know if you saw it because did you end up going to the World Rumble Access show? Uh, I I was there. I didn't see access. We didn't pay to get in because we were. It was fifty bucks, and we we're just like, oh okay, yeah, not bad. And we just wanted to go to the store, and I, I could see that it happening. I was there for the entrances of. I forget who was making their entrance. I believe it was. So you can't remember because I was so focused on buying merch. And, yeah, uh, yeah, but just, just to throw it out there, the whole Worlds Collide tournament, which for those of you who don't know, is a 15-man tournament pitting NXT against NXT UK and against uh, 205 Live. Winner of that tournament, and this is not a video game tournament. I, I just I had to stress that to Kyle. Sorry. Yep. And uh, <laughs> uh, the winner of this tournament gets a guaranteed title shot against any. Three brands mm-hmm. champion. And that's any happening title. tomorrow, I believe. They're, yeah, they're airing so it tomorrow on the network. That's why I bring it up. So mm-hmm. I have gone through the entire week with no spoilers. I have no idea who won the tournament. So all you guys out there, do not tweet me. Do not tell me yeah. nothing. I'm watching it tomorrow, baby. Yeah, so. I'll watch it too. Um, all right. <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah. So I guess I give this pay per view a. So short, dude. It was only. It was, it's very could this short. Have been the, the shortest takeover. For us, it wasn't short. For for people watching, it was short. But for what we got after, it made it long. They they extended that that part. But for people watching, I could tell it was short. 
Um, yeah. It boggles me, the be, mind. Yeah. It boggles the mind knowing the fact that a Monday Night Raw was longer than this yeah. Takeover. I'm gonna paper. give it a four out of five. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. The one that's missing is due to the uh, interesting finish between the woman. Um, and being a little bit short, and I think the main event should have been Gargano Ricochet. Mm-hmm. The match placement was a little off, so I'm giving it just a solid four out of five for this one. I'm gonna give a four out of five too, because unlike the main roster, I'm not trying to hate, but uh, a lot of these matches were enjoyable to watch, and mm-hmm. I don't think any of these matches. I mean, me and Kyle talked about it. There were some finishes that we would have done differently, mm-hmm. but none of the matches I, I kind of like watch and go like oh that was an awful match the ending was not good why did they even have this match you know yeah regardless of it i enjoyed it it was a good pay-per-view it was decent i liked it especially being there live was really good um after it was interesting night now you guys can go see what happened later on that night after my blog kind of some explicit content but i have blocked it out don't worry (laughs) um anyways um so before we head over to the main roster and review, uh, uh, sorry, uh, review the, uh, the that other show, the other show <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, of the. Uh, I can't. I can't. I keep forgetting it. Royal oh, yeah, it's the Royal Rumble. <laughs> That's what happened that weekend. Yeah, is uh, extremewrestlingshirts dot com, and they uh, they are the official sponsor of the No Holds Barred Network. Uh, they specialize in pro wrestling and MMA apparel with over 50,000 T-shirts, sweatshirts, costumes, DVDs, and pendants in stock right now, guys. So go check them out and use the promo code NOHOLDS at checkout, and you're going to save 10%. That's right, a perfect 10% off your order. One lucky fan per month will also win a free gift from ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com with their order uh, by using the code NOHOLDS. So make sure you use that code NOHOLDS on checkout. Go check out Extreme Wrestling Shirts, the official sponsor of the No Holds Bar Network. Also want to give a quick shout-out to Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Guys, they have a great line of wrestling merch um, with their, their own specialty logo on them. You can see such superstars as Kevin Nash, Eugene, uh, Jake the Snake, Roberts, all supporting that merch so go check them out and we have been given a code to use code jumbo on behalf of jimmy a loyal fan of the network to use and you guess what you're going to save 10 percent on that as well so go check out the two official sponsors of the no holds bar network guys and that is um extreme wrestling shirts.com and uh the collar and elbow wrestling brand 